Boom. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Don Saki, and we are on site at the Ross Science Film Festival, the fifth annual one, where we are spreading amazing scientific ideas through film and media. We are really excited to be talking to the producers correct of behind the groove creators. all th creators, well, creators creators of behind the groove awesome um we have sydney we have jesse we have sheldon joining us thank you so much for coming onto the show and chatting appreciate it a thank lot thank you thanks thank guys you. thank you um behind the groove is very exciting it's uh and th and I'll, I'll ask you guys uh to share but i for me when you guys were sharing the idea i was thinking about all of the unsung heroes mm -hmm period. Just all of the people that are not highlighted, that need to be highlighted, the ones that worked with the people that are a the good, the, the worked with the stars. Or and this is the song is a hit song. Basically, behind the groove is the unsung heroes behind your favorite hit songs. They had to have had a hit song to be on our program, basically. And in any capacity, they had to work on the song, whether they were a singer, whether they're writer, whether they were a composer, whether they were a musician, whether they were just in the room while it was being made, engineering, what, you know, whatever it is, a coach. Um, they just were a part of the song. And so this is specifically music. music. And so this is interesting because one of the first things that came to my mind was about this the tech companies. Because within the tech companies, you see Musk in the media, but you never see the next level at SpaceX and Tesla who's actually contributing to the building out all of the what they're doing and so but you're highlighting and there's the same thing with film as well i'm just saying with film as well you see the cast but you never see for example here at raw science film festival we're not highlighting the technical directors and the audio engineers and etc yeah so tell us about how you found these you know well first of all tell us about how you found the idea of behind the groove to be super important because no one's doing this quite yet and it's exciting well thank you, you thank you thank you oh okay yeah, yeah. Well, one of the concepts was we were just wanted to bridge the gap between the baby boomers and the millennials. We wanted to teach people about where the real music came from and who were the real artists behind the music. And that's basically behind the groove. And Jesse right here is, man, we've, we've all been working together for, for uh, what, a year, a little over a year now for this project. But they had it as a behind the groove, but then they brought me on and... And um, I had a thing called uh, Concert at the Fruit Gallery, so we combined it together, and it really made sense, and it's really what we want to do. And we want to educate the people. We want to let people know how to do different things in the music industry. That's why we have business associates. We have people who do music and, you know, all aspects. We want to cover that. And we want to teach people about music, the real music about everything in Compass. And uh, one thing about Behind the Groove is, um, okay, I uh, work with Sheldon, and um, I'm Sheldon's business manager, and so uh, trying to do some things a little bit different, you know, with his career. And so um, Sheldon has, you know, always wanted to do some things with television, and so um, him and I, uh, we do a lot of brainstorming. And so um, um, there was a, a segment that we were going to do on a on another project that I had that I wanted to bring Sheldon on board, you know, with that, and it was you know behind the groove and you know talking about individuals that are you know behind hit songs and so you know for me um, I used to read album covers and um, did that for years and 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 I would I would go um, in downtown Detroit just go in a record shop and just read album covers, so then as I I um, I got, got I got older. I started paying attention to uh, these different music shows. And so they were all about creating stars. But I'm thinking, well, what about the other people? What about those that contributed toward making that song what it is? And then as I began to you know, work with Sheldon, I said, we need, to, we need to focus on them. And we need to you know, give them their just due. And you know, I looked at um, on the, uh, the Funk Brothers, and I saw all the great work that they were doing and were unrecognized. And I saw the pain in one of the, uh, uh, a guitar player that had played the, uh, the lick on, uh, I think it was uh, My Girl. And he was sitting in a restaurant and he's playing this, he's hearing this lick playing, he said, that's me, that's me. And then all of a sudden he kind of pulled back because he's, it was, oh, yeah, that's me, but 
and I'm kind of hurt. And so, you know, looking at that, you know, looking at the documentary, I said, you know, we need to, you know, recognize these individuals. They, they've done great work, great contribution to music. So people need to know who they are. And so Behind the Groove is going to do that for them. It's going to educate the younger generation on real music and, and let them know it's work. You need skills. You know, it's, it's more than creating music and just pushing a couple buttons. But there's, there's a team of people that's involved that makes that song what it is. And that's what Behind the Groove is all about. Oh, I, I basically ditto what they both have said, but I, I see it as this is a wonderful opportunity, opportunity for us to bring homage and honor to people who are often forgotten. And that's, that's the main reason we're doing this. There's, it's, it's, it seems to me that there's actually two very fascinating parts to this. There's both honoring the people that are so often forgotten. I love the story of going and reading album covers because then you actually go and see all of the people involved. Yeah, yeah, involved yeah, in, in it. In one song. In one song. People don't even know one song. Yeah. <laughs> just one song. Just one song. And then, and then um, so it's part of the, um, the unsung heroes. And the other part is then it... It, there's an educational component to this of there's actually a dozen roles for people to train into. Right. So it's not just about this wanting to become the star, right. um, but there's like 12 other roles that come with the star that need to be, and at these tech companies, there's a thousand roles right. that need to be filled. Yeah, so this is what's very interesting. Um, so tell us about the, like the educational piece uh, as well. Right now, we're working on an uh, edu educational piece for uh, three colleges. Um, we're going to write their curricula based on Behind the Groove and what we feel um, would help educate the youth on what the new music should be and how they can carry it across and bring it across to others. Um, one of it, the tell us about what that curriculum <coughs> is in a little more depth. Well, like what it should be, like you said. Real music playing real instruments, teaching them uh, how to play the real instruments, the notes, learning how to read sheet music, which is real, like a real musician, they know how to read music. Most kids nowadays, they know how to play by ear, they don't know how to read the sheet music. They, they were like, uh, yeah, I can play that, but okay, can you read the music? Tell me what that note is. I bet you they can't, most of them can't. Um, nowadays, they don't even have that curricular in school anymore. That's out. So we want to bring that back and have a way for schools to generate funds for the kids to be in those classes. So that's one of the things that we're doing also, but mainly just giving the education about how, how to do it as a business, how to do it as a professional, as, as a singer, how to do it in every realm where you be taught the, you taught the ways of all the, um, all the practices that are done business-wise, how you can get paid, yeah. You know, all that. Pretty much, that's the number one thing that everybody wants to do after they make the hit song is get paid. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we want to do, help people. Our main thing is helping youth. Jesse, you had some thoughts yeah. on this? And um, you know, to be able to encourage um, the younger generation to pick up an instrument. And because creativity comes through the, through the instrument itself. And so to understand that, first of all, you need to learn how to play an instrument. Then as you begin to learn how to play the instrument, then you be, uh, be, begin to become creative. And, uh, and, and so we want to encourage youth to pick up an instrument, learn how to play the instrument, and then develop a deeper understanding through learning how to play the instrument, then you then now all of a sudden you have a deeper respect for music. And then you know that there's effort put forth to develop that skill. It might take you 10, 15 years, but you will be very good at it. You will have a deeper understanding because now you have to create it. It's from your imagination. It's not from pushing a button. This is coming straight from you. It's coming straight from your heart. And so to encourage the, the generation to, okay, pick up an instrument. <clears throat> and like, for example, like somebody um, like Sheldon, um, <clears throat> they were asking about an uh, earth, wind, and fire tune called Gratitude. 
So the guy asked Shell, he said, yeah, where did they sample that from? And uh, Shell said, no, nah, that, that's not sample. They actually playing that. <laughs> and so that says something, that it takes skill to do that. It's not automatic. I mean, you have to train the fingers, like train the mind. It comes from the heart, spirit, soul. Now all of a sudden, you can touch people. That, that music, it, it gets to the emotions of people. So you want to go, you want to get that deep with it. So that way, now all of a sudden, your, your music is, is touching people. One of the things that I would repeat is the importance of learning how to read music. There's a lot of, there's a lot of natural talent in terms of playing and picking up on stuff that you hear, and that's a great thing to have. But you may walk into a studio one day and the producer says, I've got a chart I want you to read, this is how I want the music to go. And he may not be open for any of your embellishment. So you gotta know how to read it. And that's a very important piece. Okay, this is so cool to me as well because we're kind of we're at this tipping point an inflection of we have about 7.7 .7 billion people we have exponential technology entering into every single industry artificial intelligence is now in music as well and yeah so this is this is probably more important than ever for us to be picking up and working with the as like a synthesis between an artificial intelligence and our own creativity and that requires being able to read sheet music that requires being able to pick up an instrument this also speaks really heavily to me about the create don't just consume True. mantra True. so when you show people that there's dozens of opportunities within uh like hits on songs and albums etc that then they then they realize that oh i can also fill one of those roles so i, I right. like i like that this this aspect to it a lot um because you gotta yeah, think go about this, uh, the wave of the future is the youth. And if they're not out there creating music, what are they doing? Where's the new music? Consuming, you, yeah, yeah. But if it's AI, right, that, that doesn't have soul or heart. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. So you're not gonna get that real vibe that you're supposed to be feeling because that feeling is where it's at, the emotion. Right. What, what if you can't tell the difference you can tell the difference. Oh, For, tell the difference. Well, uh, what, okay, on a, on a performance, yes, you're case. right. You're right, because you can In see. Pocket. Do you know what that is? Teach us about In Pocket. In Pocket. Okay. In Pocket. <laughs> well, it's a synergy built up between all the artists performing together, and they're going to hit that pocket where that sound is perfect. It's In Pocket. There's, there's a thing we used to do with EWF, where we may start a song off at a certain tempo, and if the audience doesn't respond the way we were stay, the way we're accustomed to it, Maurice might turn around and say, "Pick it up or slow it down." But you can't lose the feeling of the music either way you go. And we used to always wonder that, and he'd say, "Put it on the back beat," which meant don't rush it, but put it right on the edge of being behind a little bit. And all those kind of terminologies, you got to know them and you got you to recognize them on the spot. Because otherwise he'll turn around and look at you and go, mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, one thing that I do is uh, I, study, I study pretty music. And um, from the vocals to the instrumentation, and I'll say, what makes that song pretty? What makes me play that song like 10 times in a row. Uh, what makes me go back and listen to that song over and over and over? There's something about that, that, that touches the heart, that touches the emotion, okay? That comes from you. That comes from the creator of that. Music gets that deep. And when you see people, like for example, okay, Sheldon performs with a, um, Earth, Wind, and Fire um, group called Kalimba. Okay, uh, I share with people, if you close your eyes, you couldn't tell the difference. I mean, they're that good. And by Sheldon performing with them, 
that same energy is there. Uh, the people, they, they feel it. They hear the original songs, they feel the energy, and they're, they're just as lively as if they've actually gone to Earth, Wind, Fire concert because the music does it. That music is so great. Uh, my cousin went to uh, the, the concert in New York. She couldn't stop dancing. They were just coming hits after hits and people were getting more excited, more excited, more excited because those are great memories. Those songs are timeless. People go back in their life and, and remember great times. So there's a lot of power in music, a lot of power in music. It's all emotion. That was, yeah, there's a, there's a feeling that overtakes the, the, the heart when you're, it's just, it's just that spirit being communicated from the artist to the, to the audience. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're the, the, in the pocket was really interesting. <laughs> the, the, the different, like, you know, you, you bring it, you got to read the audience and dynamically adjust. Yeah. was instantaneously. instantaneously. That was very interesting. And that's for like a live audience. But for, it's, it's also interesting to think about for, a, for someone that's just listening via their uh, headphones at home or on the go, wherever they're going, not um, at a live performance, there may be an, a spirit that comes from the compute com comes from the computer as well. But is this, is this very strange that we're at this time, but um, we're we're right there. And it's I want to ask you guys a quick question. Okay, <clears throat> you've done nine episodes. Is that right? Of what? Behind the, behind the groove. No, actually, we're we've done what three, three, two, two. You've done two, two episodes yeah, featuring nine artists. Is yes, that right? yes. Oh, okay, that, got yeah. it, got it. Yeah. Two episodes with nine artists, and then, um, uh, and then, how are you identifying the artists? Um, and then, how do you identify the people that we actually yeah. have a list of uh, artists that are going to perform with us, and that's in our package that have agreed already to do the shows with us because these artists are the same unsung heroes they there's so many people that we are gotcha. in contact with that work with sheldon's work with jesse's work with i've worked with and the people on our team have worked together and so people come to us and say hey i want to be a part of that once they hear what we're doing everybody wants to jump on board and say hey look i like that because not too many people like the new music i'm just being real they don't like it. Well, there's got to be a more meaning in the music. Right. But, yeah. Because yeah. trap music and you only got, they're only saying like three words. I'll give you an example. <laughs> Go ahead. Go panda, 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 panda. That's one word. <laughs> that was a hit song. I don't know how. <laughs> how did that happen? <laughs> we, we've changed as people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, how yeah. we, we've dumbed down ourselves to listen to, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think that's going to last forever. Totally. I don't think Panda Panda is not going to last. So, so you want to also identify the heroes th that are making meaningful music that are not being recognized and identified. So you want yes, to highlight even those. Now, yeah. Even now, even the new artists, if they're uh, actually doing something like Bruno Mars, he, I, I think he's probably got the right mode going is Bruno Mars. I, I can only use him as Justin Timberlake. Mm -hmm. He's another artist, uh, not even Justin Bieber, but Justin Timberlake. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, he's a good, Sean Mendes, he's new, he's, he's really doing something. You know, I like him. Khalil, uh, I don't know if you know Khalid, I mean Khalid and uh, Normandy, they got a good track. Because uh, I do uh, radio DJing too also. Yeah. So um, hearing the new hit songs is, is pretty up to date. But most people, Bruno Mars, I'm going to go with him. Where can we find Behind the Groove right now? BehindTheGrooveLasVegas.com Okay, behind the groove, Las Vegas .com. That link is in the bio. Um, I want to ask you guys one quick question on the way out, which is, which is, what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? One word or two words? Oh, in the world. So you can take a sentence. I can give one word. Your one word, two words. Love. But we need to unpack a little bit more. Then give us the next why. Why? Give us the why. I think um, like having a, a loving and humble spirit to pour into, into the lives of others and taking what, uh, like taking your, your experiences and sharing those experiences with others so this way it makes the road easier for them. And so I know, you know for myself, um, 
I'm always looking to give back to people, always looking to help people. And I'm, I'm satisfied with you know, just being able to do something to make a difference in their life, to make that road a little bit easier so they can get to the point of success a lot quicker. Check me out. Love is the convergence between the waves of sound and the waves of light coming together and making us create songs. Peace. Peace. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap on that. I really want to, you know, thank you guys for putting this forward, putting Behind the Groove forward. Also to, also the idea is so important for other people to potentially take and start doing it in film, showing Behind the Groove in tech, showing Behind the Groove in all these yes. other, yeah, it's, this, this is really good. I'm happy you're pushing the, the, the yeah, you're doing the right thing. Um, thank you three so much for coming on the show. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. Check out the link in the bio below. Give us your thoughts in the comments as well. And keep supporting awesome artists and entrepreneurs that you believe in. Much love and we'll see you soon. Peace. Peace. Thank you. That's it, guys. Thank you. Thank you.